you're doing what you love when Sunday nights feel the same as Friday nights. There will be times as an entrepreneur where you'll have a lot of freedom, a lot of scheduling freedom. There are a lot of perks, especially for women, um, to having your own business. But there are times when you spend a lot of time working and you're not earning money for it. And so it's really important that you find your passion, follow your dreams, and um, use that as you're trying to decide what you'd like to do with your, your career and your life. You're a bit out there. I'm a bit out there. I didn't quack like all the other ducks in high school. I was very different. <laughs> I had a lot of different ideas. As an adult, though, those things have served me. So entrepreneurs can sometimes be seen as opinionated. Um, that's another reason we get fired a lot. <laughs> but having the ability to create something out of nothing takes a mad genius type person. So if you remember, people thought Albert Einstein was insane before he proved the theory of relativity. So on that note, those are just a few warmer uppers on entrepreneurship. I am going to invite Brianna to come up and tell you a little bit about her local Girls Aloud group and how it came into existence. As I mentioned earlier, I'm excited about the premise of Girls Aloud, which is, who do you want to be? My mother has been the most important person to help me start this organization, and for as long as I can remember, my mother always asked me, who do you want to be, Brianna? I think that's a good question. When I was younger, I didn't know what I wanted to be, but that's not really what the question is about. It's about discovering your interests and the type of person you want to be and building a foundation for your future. I still don't know what I want to be, but I'm making sure that my future is bright by trying in school, being a positive person, exploring careers, discovering myself, and helping others to do the same. At our meetings, we do fun activities like Pinterest projects and team building activities. And we talk about what is going on around us like peer pressure, bullying, social media, and how the choices we make each day will impact our future goals. I am most excited about our success in having female inspirational guest speakers talk to their, about their careers and what steps they had to take to reach their goals. I had to figure out how I was going to take this business in the middle of a city that was mourning a terrible loss where so many people, by example, took the opportunity to fold what they were doing and try something different. And I looked at this difficult ex opportunity, uh, this difficult experience, and turned it into an opportunity. I said, well, how can I make this company great? What can I do? And how can I defy all the odds? See, tragedy and difficulty, there's another word for it. It's called opportunity. In everything that's difficult, there is an opportunity there. That was probably one of the most important lessons that I learned. I didn't know it for some time because it was hard. It was hard. I didn't see it. I just know that every day I had to get up and figure it out. I was just determined to do it. And I remember thinking about how can I make this company great? You hear a lot about passion, right? So I had to figure out why I existed in this world. Why did God put me here? What drove me to come out and get out of bed every day. What were those things? Instead of waking up in the morning, you know, and going, okay, time to make the donuts. I wanted to get out exuberant. I wanted to wake up and jump out of bed and go to do the things that I wanted to do. So that journey was pretty, pretty long, pretty interesting, and very self-reflective. And what I realized and the way I articulate it is, I said, why do I exist? Well, my why is to guide others to get noticed so their potential could be revealed. So if that's really why I get excited every day, that's what I want to do. And I want to find a way to do that for other people. Because what I'm really good at my unique ability, which I've learned over time, is to, watch, to recognize what's really special about somebody else. Now that's a journey, right? You might not know today what you're really good at, but you know, and nobody else can tell you why you're excited on some days more than others. What are you doing that day? Where are you going? Who are you interacting with? Follow those feelings, and you'll find it. 
is that I noticed a lot of entrepreneurs, when you hear their stories, they share about starting to sell lemonade, you know, when they're on the street corners. When, and then after that, they do the grass cutting business and they do the paper routes. I remember meeting a university student. He was importing glow sticks. I was like, this guy's what, you know, 20? He was importing glow sticks from Asia, going out on July 1st on the hill, and he was just selling all this, making wicked cash to pay for his tuition. So you get all these, you know, entrepreneurs, but then there's just some of us. Some of us are the just like me. You know, that something's in sleep inside of you, and then just one day, something's gonna happen, and it's gonna be unleashed. You know, that beast is just going to come out. And so my suggestion is don't suppress it. You know, you flush it out. And it'd be important to find a good mentor. Find someone that you can talk to. Share your dreams. And I'm not talking about the dream killers. No, find the people that will share your passion with you, that'll, that'll guide you, that will point you in the right direction. Um, you know, because uh, things always work out. And desire, passion, drive, persistence, Sprinkle all that with a little bit of luck. And this here, it's interesting, I, I grabbed this because this is my granddaughter. My granddaughter is two years old and she's so super cool. I can see already that she's a driver, you know, she just obstinate, she just, you know, no is her favorite word. You know, maybe, maybe one day I'm gonna work for her. The choice of becoming an entrepreneur was probably had the biggest impact on me because I met so many people I got to do so many of the coolest things. I got to go to Paris, to Cordon Bleu. I've, I've dined with ambassadors. I've worked with uh, presidents of, of large corporations. I'm financially stable now. I'm married. I'm blessed with a wonderful daughter. I get to bring my dog to work. Her name's Maple, AKA Stinker as well. She rips a lot of things up. So. In conclusion, although that little girl in the shadows is tattooed in my life forever, because I don't always feel so confident about myself, I do feel free. I really feel free. I'm in control of my destiny and I'm in control of my life. Being an entrepreneur for me has been the single most impacting life decision that gave me this freedom. I had to take a deep breath and taking a deep breath allowed me to become brave. So that's sort of my keyword of my presentation today is about becoming brave. <clears throat> because when you start to become brave, every little step that you take, the next step becomes easier. And then you're able to make harder decisions along the way. Because the first one that seems really difficult is difficult. But then you build on your experience and you build on your confidence. So when people have asked me in passing, how could you do this? How have you become successful? And I tell them, well, I think a big part of it is that I am brave and that's a quality that I have in myself. And then I build on it from step to step to step. When you're brave, you end up having bigger dreams and you end up being able to accomplish those dreams. It's my personal opinion. Memorable roadblocks, challenges, always having enough money to make the next dream come true. Um, money is always a part of being an entrepreneur. You have a lot at certain times of the year. You may not have money at the, you know, other times of the year where you don't usually get a regular two-week paycheck. So you've got to be very creative. So financially, it's, it can be challenging to be an entrepreneur, but it's very rewarding all at the same time. Um, you know, my last pregnancy, I tried to start up an environmentally friendly uh, power plant, and uh, I just didn't have enough time with a year's mat leave. But eventually, I did meet my current business partners and my mentors, helped me get started with companies that were venture-backed, and that was what I needed to get started because I didn't have any money. My third company is not venture-backed yet because I have the financial resources now that I can build a company without that. Um, so it's very important, I think, to have venture capital in the beginning, to have government grants, learn that system. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do the government grants the first time, I'm doing it this time. Have key clients, very important, even if you have to do it for free in the beginning to get the publicity and to get the references. Mentors, extremely important. Um, 
Lots of people want to help you succeed. I know I'm at the end of my talk. So lots of people want to help you succeed. You don't have to mortgage your house and eat cat food to be a successful entrepreneur. It's not as risky as people make you think. I think being an employee is way riskier. I mean, an employer can fire you anytime and that's your one source of income. I lose a client, I've got other clients. So I'm not dependent on one person. Um, have a positive attitude for sure because you're going to have those those downturns but keep it real you have to know when it's really something that you should give up on so i decided then all right what, what am i going to do do i buckle in and ride it out to get my gold watch and pension one day or do i do something else and i remembered that earlier dream of having my own business so that's what i did and I started a business in the corner of my basement with my then two-year-old playing in the corner. And I did everything, and I did brutal hours. I was up at 6 a.m. to go to networking meetings. I'm up at midnight researching, trying to figure out you know, all the structure of how to, you know, hiring programs and training and all the different aspects. Four years after I started my business, I had another baby who you know, and the business at this point had sort of taken over the main floor of my house. Again, not a lot of division between work and life. It's, it's all blended together. So, you know, this is little Hannah literally helping with the filing. <laughs> so what can I tell you about being in business? You hear about the toolbox. It's a bit of a cliche, but sometimes cliches are cliches because there's some truth to them. You need as many skills as you can get. You can't build a house with just a hammer. You can't build a business with just a good marketing plan. You need a lot of tools. So it's talking to people, learning things, having resources, having those mentors. Advice if you're going to be an entrepreneur. You have to be tenacious. You have to be able to get back up after a fall. Because you will fall, and then you have to get back up. Surround yourself with non-like-minded uh, non people. So if you're going to have a team, even if in sports teams, you, you get people that have different skill sets so that I'm very big picture, so I have people that really drill down and look at the small details, and then together we make a great team. Um, one thing I want you to take away from this, uh, if, if you do anything, is go to your guidance counselor tomorrow and say you want to take some accounting courses. Because if you want to run a business, and I don't care if you're a doctor and you have a, a practice, um, for myself, if you're going to sell your business, if you want to know the health of your business, it's really important to understand a financial statement. You don't have to be an accountant. Just take some accounting courses to know the health of your business. Um, be optimistic, that's the key, key ingredient. So lastly, know your why. Why do you want to be an entrepreneur? Is it for you can have Fridays off, lots of money and prestige? Because if you want Fridays off, and I'm not, I'm not saying this negatively, you're better off to go work in the government. Um, they, they have great plans for uh, time off and things like that. If you want lots of money, then you should really consider being a salesperson. Because some of my friends who are in sales for some software companies make $250,000, $300,000 a year. You can make a ton of money uh, as it, in sales. Are, are you doing it for prestige? Again, being an entrepreneur, uh, I was the shipper, the receiver. I was the receptionist for 10 years. I baked the cookies we served to the students. It takes time to build yourself up to a, to a certain level. Um, but, so why would we do it? Because <laughs> it's the freedom to do what you want, uh, the control over your destiny, the creation, excitement. I wouldn't do it differently. So here's the deal. It started just because I wanted to paint work. <coughs> And that was my office. I still have that cabinet. It's, it's a keeper. It's going in the museum. <laughs> and all I needed was a computer and a, and a box to hold it and an idea. And I just kept going. And today we're in 500 stores. And this fall, I was asked by Minister Leach, who's the Minister of Status of Women and Minister of Labor, to participate as an expert panel, along with Arlene Dickinson, to work with women across the country on the tools they need to be successful in business. And so that's where I got to meet Lori Kennedy and Dr. Jacqueline Chan. And what we learned is that holy are women amazing. And they show up and they have great ideas. You know what women do that's a little different than men? We give back to our community from day one. In some way, we contribute our time, our mentorship skills, our money, and we encourage, we grab their hands and we throw them in front and we mentor. So I would suggest to you guys, find a mentor. You've heard it before. 
reach all these women that are sitting here today. And that is the key thing critical to your success. So when somebody says, you're crazy to do a pink work boot, there's somebody saying, you're crazy not to do a pink work boot. And follow who it is that you are. Know your story. Follow whatever it is that you absolutely love to do and do it. Do it 100%, 150%, wear your pink tutu and your pink work boots and just have fun. It is so fun. And it's hard on days, but the fun days far outweigh the bad days. <laughs>